In recovery interviews, we usually focus on what happened after people got sick, but today we're also going to dig deeper into what happened before, because that can set the stage for illness and also help us to understand how to best navigate our recovery. I'm so grateful for today's guest, her bravery and openness in sharing how she had to walk away from everything she knew, her faith, her community, her entire support system, just months before getting hit with COVID and then long COVID. It's a powerful story, and I know it will bring you so much inspiration and hope. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Raylan Agle, and this is a place where you'll find recovery stories from conditions like ME-CFS and long COVID. It's all about learning from each other so that we can, as a community, make better choices for our health. My guest today is Maura White over in Western New York. After leaving a high demand religious organization, which she admits many would call a cult, and navigating the pandemic as a high achieving business owner with a type A go getter personality, Maura's body began shutting down and she was diagnosed with post COVID and with POTS. But she is here now to share her journey, the challenges she faced along the way, and the strategies that are currently working for her, including a medication that has been incredibly effective that I haven't had anyone here on the channel talk about before. So let's dive in. Maura, amazing to have you join us here today. Thank you for doing this. Well, thank you for having me. I didn't know how... I mean, I've been wanting to share my story, so... And I've wanted an outlet to do it. So I'm very thankful for your channel to, you know, provide that for people that are struggling. And I just hope I can be an encouragement today for others that it might be sitting on their couch or in their bed thinking, my life is never going to get better. And I hope I can show that don't lose hope. I, I have no doubt that many people will appreciate this. So thank you for being here and bravely sharing, you know, this very personal journey that you've been on. So how did this all start for you? So let me give you a little background on where I was before the pandemic. Uh, I, I guess I just learned my journey about learning about the nervous system and how much it can affect your body and your body's health in the long run. I still wonder if I would have gone through all this without a prior major trauma stressor before I got sick with COVID. So basically my story is I was diagnosed with POTS after I contacted COVID. But to give a little background, I was involved in a very cult-like church for 22 years. I wish I got out of it sooner. The only reason why I stayed was because of the mind control that if anyone left, you were talked bad about. We were told to never talk to people that had left because they're just going to sow a seed in your brain of lies. And I'm a people pleaser. Outright a darn good people pleaser that I'm still recovering from through therapy. And the time came in 2018 and 2019 to say goodbye to the cultish church. There was some scandals going on between uh, the pastor's son and being in a lawsuit, and he ended up being in prison for the rest of his life. And then there was some mo money that was stolen from a missionary group that I was heavily involved with and was the treasurer for. And so, and realized, oh my goodness, this isn't as honest as I thought it would be. And there's a problem. And these are people that uh, did our premarital counseling. There are people that were there at my birth because the wife was a doula. Like all the most intimate things in your life. The, this was the family that was there for me. And then when I came to um, meetings with concerns about what's going on, it was like I didn't exist. It was like I was totally thrown under the bus, that my concerns were not real concerns. There was no true apology. It was just one of those, 
I'm sorry you feel that. So I say all this to preface that my body was an extreme, under extreme stress, under extreme anxiety. I am losing lifelong relationships that I've had since I was 18, 19 years old when I first started going there. And I knew that was going to happen, but I just was very surprised, I guess, at the allegations or the accusations that were put against me that were so not true. And it was like, oh my goodness, this is what they have done to many other people that have left before me. And now I am officially labeled as the bad kid. And for someone who is an extreme people pleaser, that's like your worst nightmare. And then COVID came out. I also have a degree in biology. I taught high school biology for eight years until my daughters were born. And then I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And I have watched probably every every documentary about pandemics. I know very well about viruses. It's just kind of a hobby of mine because I love biology. And so when COVID hit, of course, I took that mindset of, oh my goodness, what is our country going to do to prevent the spread of this? And... My parents, my husband's parents are at high risk of getting very sick, potentially passing away from this virus. And then I'm bombarded with so many of my quote unquote Christian friends that are sending me videos of con crazy conspiracy theories that my logical scientific brain was like, are you people kidding me? And then they just kept sending them to me. And that just added to the stress and the pressure of how I'm feeling about this ongoing pandemic and trying to mitigate the spread and totally being on the side of science instead of the conspiracy theory of I'm losing my freedoms if they tell me to wear a mask. And I was just like totally dumbfounded by that. That's, of course, my opinion. <laughs> I know that others may differ, but that is my opinion because I follow science. I know what viruses can do. So I was one of the very cautious ones who wore a mask wherever I went. And even in churches, wearing a mask became so divisive because of Christian nationalism that has kind of sunk its teeth into some of uh, fundamentalist Christian churches. And I just kept thinking, why are you refusing to wear a mask? Why are you refusing to love your neighbor? Why don't you understand how serious this is? Why are you making excuses for the deaths that are being reported on the news? And this wasn't easing my stress. I just left this crazy fundamentalist cult-like church. And now I'm getting bombarded with conspiracy theories about this virus. And I'm thinking to myself, I have a master's degree in science education and no one will listen to me. I turn into the black sheep of being on the side of caution, of being on the side of quarantine is actually a good idea, being on the side of I'm going to wear a mask wherever I can in public because my parents' lives are on the line right now. My birthday rolls around in 2021 and my husband's like, can we please just go out to dinner? Because I've refused to go to restaurants prior to this. My husband's like, can we please just go out to dinner and have a good night to ourselves? And I was very hesitant. But I said yes. So we went out to dinner. We were sitting away from people. Like it was definitely a six foot distance atmosphere. I only took my mask off to eat. And then, you know what? We, we had a really good night. I just needed a good night out to somewhat feel normal after like a year from the pandemic starting and two years since my life transforming, leaving this cultish environment and trying to regain my thoughts, um, trying to regain my critical thinking skills again. And I'm like, okay, we're going out. I don't care. I let my guard down. Five days later was my first time getting COVID. 
Like, are you serious? I went out for one night and got sick. So after I went out that night, like I was so sick. I wasn't dying sick, but for me, I was sick, sick. I was like, my whole body is aching. The fatigue set in. It was way worse than a flu. And I quarantined for 10 days in my bedroom. And for me, that was hard. 10 days was hard at that point of quarantining in my bedroom. And my birthday came and went. And I'm like, I'm all alone. My, I'm not letting my kids see me. My husband is putting on a mask and holding his breath, bringing me meals. And then it's just me and my computer trying to, I don't know, somewhat live. And I'm thinking to, I'm thinking about all the other people that had a quarantine for 10 days in their rooms. And then I'm thinking about all the people in the hospitals that are dying alone because their family can't come in and hold their hand and during their last days. And that just hit me so hard that that was the current reality and it just shook me to my core. So after I recovered from that, I thought I was great. And it probably is a week to 10 days later that all of my symptoms came back from COVID. It was the constant fatigue. The fatigue was the worst, I would say. Like, CFS fatigue. So I know I'm speaking to a CFS community where you might do something extremely minor, like walk to the bathroom one day and the next day you're in bed or on the couch because your muscles just can't do it. And that's where I was at. So after I realized, oh my goodness, I'm still sick. I might be one of those people that gets long COVID and my symptoms just wouldn't let up. I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And of course, in the back of my mind from the cult-like church uh, that was, you are sick because you don't have enough faith. That just kept pounding in my brain. You are sick because you don't have enough faith that God will heal you. Or you brought this on yourself because you were concerned about the pandemic. You were concerned about the virus. So many other people get it and they're fine. And it just, it just means that because you wanted to wear a mask, it must be a weakness inside of you that now you have long COVID. And so I'm battling that in my mind. And then the symptoms again just continued. And I'm officially like, oh my gosh, I'm one of those people with long COVID. And I do tons of research and I realized I have symptoms similar to CFS. I ha I'm having these fainting spells that I don't know what the cause is. And my uh, now I realize they are pre-syncope events. But prior to that, I did not know what was happening to my body. Like I would climb up the stairs and all of a sudden I would just collapse next to my bed and not understand why I can't crawl into bed. Uh, and my husband would somehow help me into bed and then I would somehow sink into the... What is a pre-syncope event? Pre-syncope. So syncope is like actually fainting. Pre-syncope is near fainting. So because I was still able to hear and not fully unconscious during my event, they would call that pre-sync. And that was from my diagnosis, which took a long time to get from a cardiologist. So these events ramped up and I just had zero energy to get through my days. And again, everyone at that time was just calling it long COVID. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I have long COVID. My primary care physician did not know what to do with me. She outright said that to me. And of course, I'm having these adrenaline dumps. The anxiety is out of control during this long COVID journey uh, to the, like, I can't function, I can't focus on top of the brain fog, on top of the other symptoms that other people are experiencing. Um, and I'm trying to just figure out, what do I do? I don't know what to do. My primary care physician can't help. And I'm like, doctors are clueless as to what's going on. So then me being the typical type A, overachiever, biology background, I'm going to figure this 
dang thing out. I cannot be sick for the rest of my life. So I started researching about long COVID and that led me, I don't know, down a path of just this whole dysautonomia world and also figuring out the many supplements I should be taking, the physical therapy I should be doing to get better. And I did all of it. Like, I am not going to be stuck sick. I was taking so many supplements, I don't even remember the long list of what I was taking. Uh, I have a friend who lives on my road who's a naturopathic doctor, and she was recommending some things to me. Um, But reality was that we were guinea pigs. This is a novel virus. This is all new. We don't know what to do with you. And I am like, my life is flipped upside down. My life is not what it was. I can barely get out of bed and walk downstairs and get on the couch. I am not able to drive. I'm not able to be a part of my kids' school events. I'm showering maybe once a week with a shower stool. But still just thinking about the very little amount of activity that it took for me to feel miserable the next day was just mind boggling. I did eventually go to physical therapy. So I'm like, well, that's on the to-do list of how to get better from long COVID. I signed myself up. This is not something a doctor recommended. I ended up going to physical therapy. My physical, and just, I just remember walking into my first appointment in tears thinking, walking into this building is a challenge. I don't know how you're going to help me, but I can hardly walk from the parking lot into the building without feeling like my whole body is ready to collapse. And my physical therapist was very encouraging and she was trying to solve this issue just as much as me. And she realized that long COVID was this mystery. And eventually she's like, you know what? Based on your symptoms, I think you have POTS. I'm like, what's POTS? Even though I've done all this research on how to get better, I didn't know what POTS was. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, for those that may not be familiar with the term who is watching this. In case someone watching or listening doesn't know, what's a simple sort of introduction to what that is, what POTS is? Or simple over. Okay. I, so postural means you're standing up. Tachycardia means your, how, your heart is racing. Um, orthostatic and tachycardia kind of go together. And the symptoms of POTS are extreme fatigue. It's basically, it's a nervous system disorder. So it means your nervous system is not responding correctly. My nervous system was somehow broken after I got COVID. My heart race, or my, I'm sorry, my heart rate would spike. uh, My blood pressure would drop. And when that combination happened, which was when I would go into these presyncope fainting spells and not know what's wrong with me. Other constant symptoms, again, were the extreme fatigue, like walking to the bathroom is difficult. I also had gastrointestinal issues, pretty much meaning chronic diarrhea. I'm trying to think of the main other symptoms, uh, just the muscle, the post-exertional malaise of I do a small activity one day and the next day I wake up and my muscles are so weak they just feel like spaghetti. It's not even tiredness. It's just that my muscles feel like they have nothing in them. And those were basically the symptoms that hindered me the most. I found one cardiologist in my area that specializes in POTS. So I went in to see him. And after telling him my story, he said, absolutely, you sound like you have POTS. We're going to do some diagnostic tests to make sure that that is your diagnosis. And so he signed me up for the tilt table test, um, for a stress test, the stress test, oh my goodness, going uphill. And... For me, it was more of a gradual thing where I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm not, I'm going to lose my ability to function. And so I was able to sit down in advance. So now my cat is meowing in the background. (laughs) 
Can you hear that? I can, and I can see my you, eating my plant. <laughs> can I can I take a second and put her outside? Yeah. Okay. Of Let me do that. I also want to mention that prior to getting diagnosed with POTS, that I mean the ambulance the ambulance was at my house three times uh, during this process because of the fainting spells that I didn't know what they were from and. One of the times that they came, I I have had anxiety issues most of my life. And then my doctor put me on a beta blocker for the fainting, which actually helped a lot. But my husband was home and, and they said they weren't sure why I was passed out. And they're like, has she had any suicidal thoughts? Or sh- I maybe I should say, has she had any, uh, does she have any exit plan? For her life. And he said, honestly, yeah, she's talked about it because I was so desperate. So then the ambulance took me. They thought that there was a potential drug overdose, which is why I was uh, passed out. And I had to spend the night in the psych ward, which was quite an experience that we don't have enough time to cover today. And eventually when I saw the doctor, she's like, so why'd you faint if there was no suicide attempt or sorry, exiting plan attempt and, you know, your blood work has come back fine. So what happened? I said, I honestly don't know. Maybe it was a crazy anxiety attack and chalked it up to that. And then they finally let me go home. So after I got my POTS diagnosis, I just went about and did as much as I could to get better. I ended up taking an online course that cost $7,000 and it gave me, it gave me tools to reset my nervous system and realize this is a nervous system disorder and it gave me breathing techniques and yeah, I wish I could say it gave me more for for $7,000. I would never recommend it to another person that's going through the situation because there's so many free online sources that teach the same thing. Uh, And then I'm I'm still going through therapy because of the mind control things from the previous cultish church and just what I'm experiencing physically and how my life completely just flipped outside, flipped upside down. I was also starting to take a class out of the UK, which I don't remember the name of, um, but just exercises to help recondition your body while you're in the middle of all of these CFS symptoms. So I was doing that. And then I think the best part was that I started seeing an upper cervical chiropractor, which I don't even remember. Oh no, my naturopath friend I asked her about that because I I saw other testimonies online about people starting to feel better after they went to a chiropractor. And my naturopath friend actually worked in the same office as an upper cervical chiropractor. And so I walked in there and they do imaging on your neck. Uh, So it's not a typical chiropractor because they do work on um, your neck vertebrae and they took imaging like an x-ray to see where I was at and they said you have you know a years decades long injury in your neck uh my c4 and my c5 vertebrae were almost fused together and they said what is there anything that's happened to you in the past that would have caused that trauma on your body I said well I was in a car accident when I was 16 And it's a miracle that I walked out of that accident, but I walked out of it virtually injury-free, not knowing that the whiplash from the accident caused a spinal or vertebrae injury. So they said, okay, we're going to work on this, and we are very familiar with POTS, and we're going to get your nervous system back in order. So that was July of 2023. And after going to them, 
for about six months, I was like, oh my goodness, I can totally see a change. I am finally getting better. My nervous system is getting released. I am, I am able to do more physically. I was just so hopeful because for the first time since I got my first COVID diagnosis, I was feeling like, oh my goodness, I might actually get back to my old self. So then the clincher, the end of my story is that uh, we were supposed to go on a family vacation in the Adirondacks in New York. My mother-in-law rented a house for us. I was so excited because I was like, okay, I physically can do this this time. Yes, I'm limited, but I can physically go. And so the night before that trip, I have been so far away from my God and my own spiritual health because of leaving the cult like church and realizing what does Christianity even look like anymore? I don't know. And it totally just disappeared from my life or something that grounded me for most of my life. And so I just kind of gave that up of thinking, I don't know what's right and wrong anymore. I don't know what I've believed or not believed that's right anymore. But that night before the trip, I just remember laying down on my bed and praying for the first time, like really praying like I have it in years. And the basis or the basic theme of that prayer was, God, I just need to know that you still love me. That's all I need to know. And can you show me somehow on this vacation that you still love me? The next morning, my husband went to work and he was feeling a little down and out. And he said, you know what, just to be safe and I don't want to infect anyone, I'm just going to take a COVID test. Even though it's probably not COVID, it's no big deal. He called me and said, I just took a COVID test and it's positive. <laughs> like, we're supposed to leave on vacation today. This was going to be my one thing of freedom just to get out of the house. I've been stuck in the house for three years. So he tells me that, and it was hours later after he called the mus muscle eggs all came storming back, and I'm sicker than a dog. <laughs> I'm like, God, I just said, do you still love me? And the next morning I wake up, and now I have COVID again. What do I do? And my husband, of course, gets COVID like a lot of people. He's down and out for 24, 48 hours. He's ready to go about his days again. And my mother-in-law, you know, she spent a lot of money on this rental house. She paid for the whole thing. And so she's like, we'll just delay the trip by a day. But do you think you, my husband and the kids can still come up? So they left. And I said, just go. I'm so used to saying, just go live your life. I'll be home on the couch. That has been my life for three years, as depressing as it was. So they went on the vacation, but I just kept getting worse and worse to the point of I shouldn't have been left home alone. I had a friend who said, I will take you to the hospital. I said, what are they going to do with me in the hospital? I'm not having breathing issues. I'm not dying. What are they going to do for me? I'm just home suffering. My pot symptoms came roaring back. None of it is life-threatening except for just the constant suffering that I was like I can't believe I'm experiencing this again when I just started to feel better so then my friend was like there's antivirals there's something you have to be able to take and I remember researching Paxlovid I remember looking it up and thinking okay you need a positive PCR test and they'll be able to give it to you. I know originally when it first came out, it was just for people that had a comorbidity. And I was like, well, I don't have a comorbidity. You know, I'm relatively healthy. But I was so desperate and I did an urgent care video phone call. And I, and I was like, I don't even know if I can get this, but here's my scenario. I've had long COVID. I have POTS. Can I get Paxlovid? And it was like, no questions asked. A half hour later, the prescription was filled. My dad ended up driving it up to me, even though it cost hundreds of dollars with my insurance. But he drove it up to me. And I started taking it. And like two days later, I started getting some energy back. Then it was totally an insomniac and couldn't sleep for three nights, but it was still a great experience. And since I took that, 
I have not crashed, even though I keep waiting for that time where I'm just going to crash again and go back into this chronic fatigue. Um, but I haven't. And I feel like I'm 85% better. Uh, I won't say 100. I definitely still have pot symptoms, but they are not debilitating uh, as much as they were. I feel like I can drive my kids around. I can tend my kids' activities. It has just been night and day. It's been over a month since I got sick again, and this has been my new experience. And maybe the hypothesis of the virus still living in my body somewhere, maybe that's true. There's still so many hypotheses going on about COVID, but me living as a patient that had chronic fatigue syndrome symptoms, getting sick again, which is not how I thought God would show me he still loves me, but I got sick again, got medicine, and now I feel like I'm finally living again. And that has been a miracle. Wow, Amora, I am so happy. It's incredible how people have these brutally tough journeys, but then things, when they start to turn around, can start to turn around quite quickly. You know, it's hard to feel that in the moment that maybe a few months from now, I could be in a whole new place. But for many people, that is the case. So I'm so happy that you were able to find something that's been helping you. Yes. I, <laughs> me too is an <laughs> understatement. Me too is an absolute <laughs> understatement. Um, um, it's just been so hard throughout this journey with other relationships and friends understanding what I'm going through because this is such a new thing. And then finally to tell them, oh my goodness, I'm better. And then my, even my own family, my husband's like, oh my gosh, you're up making dinner. This is new. And I think it's still going to take some time for both me and my family to adjust to a new normal that's been years long of mom just can't do this. Mom can't do that. Mom can't do that. And I'm, sl I'm still nervous about overdoing it. But at the same time, every time I test it, I wake up and I'm not the spaghetti body. I might feel sore. Like I just did a major workout yesterday if I go for a long walk or something. But I'm no longer feeling that same amount of fatigue that I felt prior. I just wanted to share my story and just let people know that I have been on a three-year journey of health. And I'm now finally starting to feel like I may get my normal life back again. And for me, that is so crucial. It got me thinking about a woman I interviewed a while back named Melissa. She's also in the New York area. She had a brutal journey with long COVID, a very different path to recovery, but I'll link it here for people watching um, because that's you know, the point of these stories is to get ideas, see what resonates. Like, oh, we have some similar things. I think that might work for me. So very much appreciate you telling your story today. Thank you, Mara. Thank you for allowing me to tell the story. And even if just one person is encouraged by this, that's all I want from it. Thank you so much, Maura. And thank you to everyone for listening and watching. And I hope to see you in this next one with Melissa, where she actually also recovered using a different off-label medication. So nice to see that there are different things out there working for different people.